Okay. Trying to uh, eradicate what's wrong and instill what's good. What? What's in your view? What's wrong? Anyone who's against Christ and what he stood for. Anyone who's against God. Anyone who's against the light. Anyone who. Anyone who doesn't understand the simple concept of service to others. Okay. And service to others can mean yourself too. Sure. You know, one of the things that I learned early on was to, 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 remain, to remain cognizant of the fact that I need some help too. I would give so much to others that my, my guardian angel names I like that said to me, baby, I love you doing this. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep helping people. But you got to remember that you're you're a beautiful child of God too. And sometimes you need to be a little selfish once in a while and just sort of have a day off. And I'm having one of those days where I'm really not doing much. I'm just sort of enjoying the sun. And, you know, just kind of relaxing a little bit mm -hmm. because you know if you just give, 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 physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted, and then you're no good to anybody. Sure. So today's kind of one of those days and I'm walking down and I'm like, oh, this guy's preaching about Jesus, so let's go and check him out. So what's your name? My name is Ken. Ken, I'm Kalen. Kalen? Kalen. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what I heard, if, if I could repeat to you what I, what I heard you say. Yeah. Fundamentally, the problem in the world is that people don't serve each other enough. People just they, are unkind. They they're don't, unkind. They don't want to help each other. That's, okay. that's pretty much the main thing. They want to help themselves. Okay. And would you say that that was Jesus' main message? His main message was be happy, love each other, have a great time. That's basically it. What, what if I said, I don't think that's Jesus' message? I think I, I would want to know what you think. Is okay, I think Jesus's message that, that he the, the first sermon Jesus ever got up and preached. His first words were this: "Repent, for the kingdom of God is near." Mm. Right. Well, that's in there too, obviously. You know. Uh, uh, and so, so, and you know, think about the things you do or have done, and uh, how you might be able to some of your karmic debts. Yeah, that's in there too, of course. But well, I don't think Jesus was referring to, to karmic debt. I think he was referring to an actual debt that man owes to God, that he earns by doing bad things. Um, let me that again. Sure. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Romans. The wages of sin is death. What he literally is saying is, by your sin... You earn from God as a wage death. Oh yeah, well that's karma. That's what I'm talking about. You uh, do bad well, things, bad things happen to you. No, no, no not not bad happen things happen to you, right? God, God is God is a God of grace, right? He allows the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous, right? Just let, let's say let's say, for example, last night you got drunk and punched somebody out, right? That has no bearing on whether or not today a good or bad thing will happen to you necessarily, well, in a karmic sense, in a Hinduistic karmic sense. Well, karma um, is um, just how the universe works. And, um, it, it's really straightforward. But I know, I know what karma is. Yeah, I know what karma is. I just disagree things. with it. Well, it's just there's nothing to, to agree or disagree with. It's just it's like disagreeing with gravity. Everyone knows it's there. It's right in front of you. It's, it's uh, part of the fabric of our life. It's, it's, it's everywhere, and it's not something you can really um, discuss. What does it exist, or it doesn't, or doesn't it? It's just a simple law of the universe. Okay. Um, you're a good person, good things happen to you. A bad person, bad things happen to you. Sometimes it takes a little while to catch up. Sure. Um, and actually, the, the calculation is uh, that um, what comes back to you, good or bad, is sevenfold what you put out. Okay. Sevenfold. That's, that's the so, actual math of it. So, Kaylin, are you a pretty good person then? Great person. By whose standard? God's. Okay. Look at the Bible. I think we can agree. He lays out his standard. What's that? I think we can agree God lays out his standard in the Bible. Right? God, God gives a standard of what maybe a good person would look like. Well, yeah, if you really need to ask him. I think it's uh, sure. kind of obvious to most people. Sure. Be, but so, if it's not, then yeah. So do good know? people lie? 
Oh, uh, yeah, if they have to. <laughs> hey, good people lie. I'll give you an example. Okay. You're afraid of spiders. You're so afraid of spiders that if you saw one, you would have a heart attack and die. Okay. Okay. There is a million spiders behind you right now. And you say, Kaylin, you're afraid of spiders. Sure. Are there any near me? I'm not going to go, yeah, they're right behind you, because you're going to keel over and die. So I'm going to lie and say, I don't see any spiders. So when God says... Well, hold on, do you think I would have done the right thing if I no. said that? No. No. The right thing would be to say... To tell the truth. There are spiders behind you, and then the, you keel over and die. Do you really think the, that's the, the right, the thing right The right thing to do is to tell the truth. Because God says, in his word, thou shall not lie. Unless something like that. But he doesn't say that. Situation. He doesn't say well, unless the situation. The situation there might be. Right. Like, I, I mean, up, you know, like you don't have a Bible this big. Well, I, just come and say. I, I I agree. And so so here's the problem with that though, right? Is let's say let's say we look at at a command like don't murder, right? And, and someone comes along and they say, well, look, Kalen, uh, I'm going to kill 30 people unless you murder this guy. Right yeah, now. Well, unless you murder this guy? Yeah. I'd say, say that again. Right. This, is so, like, this is like an ultimatum that yeah. you would give me, let's say, yeah. hypothetically. Right. And, and so so now... So, so, so what is it? Say it again. So, so imagine someone came to you and they said, look, we're going to blow up a building. Mm. We're going to blow up the Hard Rock Cafe unless you go kill... But the food is awful now. Is it? <laughs> unless you kill this specific person. Right? Mm. Does that suddenly make murder an acceptable act? Because no, because there's always another option. There's never just this. Oh, or okay, there's so there's always the other option. Which so is to do neither and let God intervene. And so, so it, by your example that you gave me, right? Wouldn't wouldn't the obvious choice, right? What you just said was, look, Ken, I don't think I'm comfortable with murder because I know murder's wrong, right? So I'd choose not to murder. But I'm not really convinced that lying is all that wrong. And so while there's a third option there, yeah, I. I'd say lying is okay. Well, if it's something like right? murder or these people get murdered, then... Um, but you, you see what I'm saying? But, well, what I'm saying is if the option is, is you're saying if you come over to me and said if you don't you know, murder this person, I'm going to blow up the building, what do I do? I'm, well, I'm not asking what you would do. I'm asking is it morally acceptable for you what? to murder someone? In that situation? In that situation. It's morally acceptable to kill that person, and I'll tell you why. The right thing to do would be to not kill that person. But, in a real scenario, mm -hmm. and not me, because I wouldn't, but let's just say sure. person A, if you said to person A, I'm a, bad, I'm a bad guy, I'm a terrorist, sure. and here's a gun, and you yeah. better do what I say. If you don't murder that person, 100 people over here are going to die. If I just don't know what to do, and I panic, and I'm like, oh, all right, and I kill the person, am I a bad person yes. for doing that? Yes, you're I'm, a murderer, aren't you? Well, hold on, let me finish. Under the stress, sure. having to think on my feet, and maybe making the wrong choice, but I was put under pressure, and I was, I was cornered like that. Sure. I think that's one of those situations where if you did make, the wrong decision, it can be overlooked because you sort of put in a, a, a spot there. Now that's a lot different to just walking down the street and going back Why? And killing people. Why? Why? Man, come on, don't you see the No, no, don't I, I don't because there? here's what here's, here, here's what I see. Right? I see a standard. Right? And and, and it's an arbitrary standard. Standard? It's an arbitrary standard. It's an arbitrary standard. In this case, you're making yourself out to be the arbiter. Well, we do have free will, don't we? No. Oh, we don't have free will? Not, not, sure not, 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 not in the sense of we get to choose what's right and wrong. We get to choose what we feel is the right or wrong we do, thing but, to do but, in a given situation. But doesn't God I, judge that? Of course he does. Right? And so, and so you know here's he my... He would judge in that situation. He would judge it to be wrong because he said, thou shalt not murder. Do you know what? Yes. Like I said, he didn't have time to write a book this big with all the exceptions. Sure. Well, if you're cornered by a terrorist and he says, well, if you don't kill this person, I'm going to kill this person. Well, it's not the right thing to do, but I kind of would understand if you did it. Do you think he has the time to write a book like I, that? I, do you know what that is, Ken? That's called common sense. I, I, I totally disagree, and here's why. Okay. What, you're, was it, you're a lovely guy. You're what, a beautiful child of God. Here, here's my question. What, was it German common sense in the 1930s and 40s to murder people because of their race? It was. 
It was common sense. It was no. German common sense. If you no, it wasn't common sense. If you were to go to sense. if you were to go to Germany in 1940 and ask the average person on the street, is it morally acceptable to kill somebody because they're Jewish? Mm -hmm. They would have said yes. Well, they're blameless. And they would have said based on their common sense what they perceive right? to be common and so, sense, not common sense. How do you know? How do I know? How do you know? Because See, I know right from wrong. And you can? I, I, you think that's common sense? I think that right and wrong is defined here. You don't. Yes, I, th I think I think there's a lot of right and wrong in there. There's a lot of sense in so, it. So is it, is it, is it definitional? Is when God says, thou shall not lie, right? Does, does that mean... Well, you can lie, but just not in these ways. Well, you can't tell a big lie, but you can tell a small I, lie. I think that at the end of the day, he knows we're not stupid. And he's, you know, set down some guidelines and some basic do's and don'ts, fundamental things. And the rest of it, we're intelligent enough to figure out for ourselves, or we're supposed to be. So where, where do you think God came up with these standards? They didn't come up with them. They're just inherent in the universe. They're part. They, they are God. They're part of God. They're, they're part of Him. It's just. It's just obvious common sense. This stuff, you know. So so. So before God existed, you would say that those, those, so God always existed. How so, can there be something without God? So, so those attributes always existed with Him, like no, like they, alongside they are, Him. They're, no, they're part of so they come from Him. No, they're part of Him. They're an aspect of Him. Of part of Him. Part of His nature, character. How would you define that? Individuality. Um, being. This is where language sort of breaks down because it's difficult to use words to describe God. But standards, morals, ethics, what's, what's the right thing to do in a given situation, you know, these are, just, these are part of what God is. So here, here's, here's what I think, if I could be so, so blunt. I think that I What's think this, that you. By the way, I'm just interested. <laughs> the whole time no, microphone. Talking. Oh, okay. You uh, got a pet mouse in there or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I think that I, I, this is what I think. I think that the Bible is actually objectively true. A lot of it's true. A lot of it's not. And I'll tell you what why. would you say is not true? Could you give Sorry, me an example? Absolutely. I should have brought a drink with me. Oh. I flew in from Portland this morning. No, thank you. I've I've got to drink water. I've got a, a cold. Uh, you wouldn't want me to drink from that. I believe there's a God if no one's ever seen it, you know, like, don't you think someone would have seen God by now? It just doesn't but you believed in atoms which no one has seen. Well, that's, as, as, well, I believe it because a lot of people um, have actually said they've seen them and have, you know, these, well, no. like, these electron microscopes with pictures they, of them, they, which is a little better than God. I there's mean, there's no scientist who would ever say that they've seen an atom. Well, but, but, but the point is that... Um, you know, the nuts and bolts version of how this came to being, you know, has been recorded, documented, proven, etc., etc., and science is a thing that's tangible, and, and I've seen it and read it and understood it and got it, like, where is it supposed to be? I'm just saying what I didn't sure. believe in God. I do now, absolutely. So I had this spiritual awakening. It's a very long story, and I'll write a book about it someday, no doubt, and I'd love for you to read it. Um, but uh, suffice to say, I had this awakening, and one of the first things my guardian angel told me was, Halen, don't read the Bible. Not yet. I said, okay, why is that? She said, just like you, just like you always thought, a lot of it's wrong. Now, here's the thing with the Bible. A lot of it's right, okay. but a lot of it's wrong, and that's because the Illuminati, the New World Order boys, whatever you want to call the dark, the evil in the world, in the universe, they have, over time, taken portions out, added bits, edited parts, jumbled it up, mixed it around, 
s with it basically and plus it's an old book and you know over time you know things get changed and like you have you know 12 guys who hung around with Jesus and you know Jesus never wrote anything down except for in sand and on and on dust that was that was a mandate from the father he was not, he was to leave no uh, paper trail so to speak it was just a spoken word only so now you've got years later you've got his disciples like John's like yeah no I'm pretty sure that day he did this and then Peter's like no, no no it wasn't like that it was like this and so you got you know there's a little bit of mix up. How do you know that? Because that's just common sense. It's years later. Can, can I, can I, as oh, some, as but, some, but, oh, hold on, hold on. Finish what I'm saying. Okay, well, finish. Let me finish, then you start. That's finish what you're saying. Works. Okay. So you've got all of this in the mix. Yeah. I mean, can you remember what we're saying word for word 10 years later? There are, cer there, there are certain, Would you? there are certain Would conversations you? that have What's been important enough hold in on. my life. That I do remember word for. For example, I remember. They're not going to remember every single detail years. Like, I mean, that's just. No, you're, 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 every you're right in a sense, and in a sense, you're also wrong because I would okay. argue, I would argue that there's certain things, even yeah. from your childhood, where you can remember exact well, portions of like, a. You know, like exact figuration, him on the cross. You're not going to forget what, stuff like that. But I mean, and what did John like say? Said John said, if, if we were to write down everything that Jesus said and did, there's not enough paper in the world. Well, you right, and that they're, everything, but that they're all, all taking is, summaries. All I'm saying is, even if you just take that out of the equation, okay. you, and you just left with, there is evil, and you would agree there is evil. Basically. Yeah. Well, evil's mandate is to be against Christ. So, of course, they're going to take the Bible, and they're going to take portions out, add their own, and, you know, and not let anyone know they've done that, and go, yeah, this is the Bible, yeah, and we didn't touch it at all, honest. And then we're reading it, thinking it's the Word of God, and a lot of it is. But you can see how evil has a has a has a want and a need to change this holy book. You understand that they're going to want to try to do that, and they do do that. They've got their claws into every aspect of society. That's why Jesus can, is back. Hey, I, I'm going to say three things, and I hope you're not offended by any of them. You won't offend me. First, you, you're absolutely <laughs> abjectly ignorant of textual criticism and the actual history of the Bible. As someone who's actually studied a fair amount of how we actually got this text today. You're abjectly ignorant and factually inaccurate. Okay. That's that's one. We can go and we can get manuscripts that are 1,900 years old, fragments of them, and we can match them to. How, you know that they're right? how, how do we know? How do you know the old manuscripts? How do we know that they're right? Well, given the the nature of the transmission of the text, where they were found, how they were found. Where they were found. How they were found. Sure. I don't Wait, when, How do you know that yeah. they're factually correct? Well, I'll, I'll show you. Let's say that you write down a story, mm -hmm. right? And and this story by hand is copied and taken to Egypt, is taken to the U.S., is taken to Norway, and is taken to Russia. Okay? And then they're copied from there. Okay? If I were to make a big insertion in Russia, do you think you'd be able to figure out that there was an insertion made in Russia, based no, upon, ba well, well, based upon seeing what's in Egypt and the U.S. and Norway? I'm not sure I'm understanding uh, what you're sure. saying. That might be my fault. What I'm saying um, is this: well, is what that I'm saying is, if you take any piece of written text, whether it's written on papyrus paper from thousands of years ago or written on someone's iPod, um, iPad, how do you know it's true? Just because it's written. No, no, that's not that's not why it's true at all. The the Bible the, Bi the Bible is obje is objectively true. That, I'm saying because you know because it God defines it as objectively and true. He knows it does. Did he say? Yes, he did. Oh, he did. Yes, when? in in the Bible itself. No. How did he tell you that the Bible everything is, is in? Because there? in the, in the Bible he actually says that. No. When did he tell you? Said he told you that you can. Yeah. In that. in the Bible. So he didn't tell you can. God doesn't talk to me. God talks in His Word, Isn't the Bible. That an irony that you, this no. man of God that comes out here in public and preaches, has never even talked to God. No, well, I've talked. I talk to God through His Word. You can connect with God. You know what? For one day, do do this for me. Do this for me, just as an experiment. For one well, day, and could, we're on the same page. Well, I love you, could, by the way. I, I'm just could could I continue my other two points? Before, remember, okay. yeah, remember yeah, the conversation, right. right? Is is the transmission of the text, All right. right? Incredibly inaccurate, as you laid it out. It I'm sounds. It's, everything is inaccurate. It, but there are some inaccuracies. It, well, what I'm saying is that based upon what you said to me, it's what you said was factually inaccurate. Some some facts are wrong. Yes. Because big evil facts. Guys have got their. Hands Secondly, say so let's let's talk about these evil guys for a minute. 
Is your God so impotent that he couldn't protect his word? Uh, well, you, you see, this is where we come back to free will. So, it's like, it's so like the evil someone, people have free will, but God doesn't. If you let me finish. Sure. It's the classic, well, if there's a God, why is there war and famine? And because all he decrees it. Be, because he what? Decrees it. You didn't just say that. I did just say that. And I believe that. Unlike some people, I actually believe that there's purpose in evil. I don't believe in purposeless God evil. Wants innocent people to be horribly mutilated, yes. raped, and killed. You think God? I, I wants think that? I think absolutely nothing. Innocent people? I don't believe in innocent people, sir. Well, you don't believe in innocent. People. There's no one who is innocent. Exactly. No one's innocent. Why not? Because they've all broken God's law. Are you sure with the Bible? I actually believe the Bible. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy, I know. It's a little crazy, you know? Yeah, I actually believe what's written <laughs> in here. <laughs> I know. Here's what I want to do. I respect um, that you come out here and speak the way your, your heart tells you to speak and the way you feel. Um, I've enjoyed talking to yeah. you. Can I shake your hand? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to tell you something which you obviously won't believe, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Sure. I am Jesus. No, you're not. It's okay, I don't expect you to believe but me. Politely, you're not. Politely, I'm not. My name is Kalen Samawi. In this incarnation, 2,000 years ago, I was Jesus Christ. I don't, again, I'm not expecting you to believe me. Um, this was set up by the big guy upstairs. Did, did your, years, guardian, did your guardian know, angel tell you this? But I haven't finished yet. Okay. Um, everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by chance. Sure. This meeting, just like every meeting you've ever had in your life, was set up, was ordained by the big guy upstairs. Um, be happy, this is, I'm not against you, you sure. have your opinions, um, I love you, you're beautiful, can I give you a quick hug? Uh, I, I've got a real bad cold, you really, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'm gonna hug you from here, like I, I have walking I, pneumonia, I, I, you really don't want me to give you a hug. because I think, even though you've got some stuff wrong, Could, and I well, here, here's what I, still, here's what I don't understand. Say what's on your mind, I respect sure. that. Sure. I just want to tell you that I am Jesus, I am back, this time around, my name is Kalen Samawi, but Jesus Christ, call me God, see this face on the TV, your jaw's gonna drop and go, that, that is Jesus, oh my and it's all gonna be good. Shake my hands, I love you, Ken. Sure. You're, 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 you're could, could I guy. ask you one last question? Yeah. You said that this met, meeting was predestined. Everything is. Everything? Even rape and murder? Well, maybe maybe if I choose hold to on, step here instead of there, that wasn't preordained. So, so the, when the, the rapist things. meets his rape victim, is that predestined? Of course not, but you would believe so because you think God's so, so, But something. you just said every meeting is predestined. Not those meetings, the meetings that you plan with God before you come here. The pleasant ones, the ones that, that so, you change as to so what only, you come, not So only those. the good things. No, no, not only the good things. The good things and the challenges, but there's a line. God doesn't say you will be born a paraplegic and be raped every day by your parents. No, we don't do stuff like that. There's a line, there are challenges, but there's a okay. line. Okay, okay. Hey, I appreciate your time. You have a, you have a good day. I respect that you do your thing. Thank you. And look out for this on TV, Okay. Right? Yeah. Take care. You have a great day. <laughs> that went from, from bad to, to nutty to strange to downright insane. That was one of the weirdest conversations of my life. Well, welcome to Hollywood Boulevard, Jeff. Thank you for bringing me to Hollywood, Tony. <laughs> Thank you.